Hey there, everyone. My name is Justin Delhan, and I am a member of Team PPG's international team, and I'm here to talk to you guys today about the new set Maximum Crisis in Yu-Gi-Oh! So with the introduction of Maximum Crisis, we are getting an expansion on the True King and True Draco deck, as well as an expansion on Zodiac. Uh, those are the more meta-based uh, decks that we're uh, getting some cards for. And uh, in terms of one of the cards that people are going to be looking out for is Dragonic Diagram, and it's a new field spell that will give you access to... Uh, True King's and True Draco's destruction ability in the hand to special from deck. And any time, or I think add from deck, excuse me. And uh, any time that we get a field spell, uh, it really has the potential to change the dynamic of the meta whenever field spells are uh, broken. And the examples I always think about are things like uh, Cosmotown, which is arguably the best field spell that's ever been printed. And uh, speaking of Cosmotown, actually, with um, there's a new card. It's called Set Rotation, I believe. Uh, it, yeah, it, there's a card called Set Rotation that lets you put a uh, field spell on your opponent's side of the field and a uh, field spell on your side of the field, and it sets both of them. And that's actually going to be played with Cosmos because you can give your opponent your Cosmo Town and then do shenanigans by destroying their field spell and getting cards to your hand. So uh, I do like that they're making field spells kind of cool and broken for this set, and uh, I'm excited to see what people are going to put together for mini engines to create a singular deck for this new format. So the things uh, in this set that I'm really looking forward to more than anything is the singular cards that stand alone. And so some of those cards would be the Hand Trap Ghost Ash. Uh, I think that's one of the best cards in this set. Now while it might not be that great against the Zoo deck because it does trade with things like Terra Top and Barrage but doesn't really stop the Zoo combo very well, it does deal with some of the biggest and scariest decks in the meta, and the one that comes to mind more than anything is 60-card Grass decks. The fact that Ghost Ash uh, uh, does negate a Grass from being activated, or at least from being resolved, I shouldn't say activated, uh, it allows you to have three more hand traps in your deck that deal with, which is what I would say the one of the most difficult matchups for any deck, because no matter what deck you're playing, if you're playing 40 or 42 cards and they're playing 60, and they resolve a um, Grass is always greener, even if you have a good matchup against the version of Grass deck that they're playing, it's still going to be an uphill battle whether they mill Snows or if they mill Traps for their Frogs or they mill Light Swarms and get things like Eclipse Wyvern and Trick Clown. All those different things, it's going to be a big problem. And so I think Ghost Ash is an amazing card. Another card I'm really excited for is um, Tornado Dragon. Now, we probably needed this card, I'd say, two years ago. But the fact that it's a, it's a once per turn during either player's turn, quick effect, that destroys a single trap on the f spell or trap card in the field, that's really good for the game. Uh, I'm not certain if it'll see play right away, but I can see in the future that card being very uh, potent and used in any sort of rank 4 deck. Uh, another card that I really like is, and now I'm forgetting the name, but uh, it's, a, it's a trap card that once per turn... During either player's turn, you can pay a thousand to destroy a face-up spell or trap card on the field. So I like that because it's continuous disruption during your opponent's turn. You can also use it on your own turn. You just have to wait a turn, I guess. But uh, cards like that, I'm really excited for because they're singularly good on their own without needing anything else to make them good. And so that's what I think makes this set so strong is the fact that we're getting cards that actually don't have to go in a particular deck to be good. We're all just going to need those cards for access, for utility. So I think that's what makes Maximum Crisis a really good set. And so having said all that about uh, the singular cards being good, I would suggest anyone that is trying to uh, build the true Draco and uh, any sort of deck like that, for me personally, I think it's best if you get those cards at Sneak to hold on to them unless you know you can get them relatively quickly once the set releases. But the important thing I think people should know is any card that you think you only need one of, whether it's a Seeker Rare or an Ultra Rare, especially if it's an Ultra Rare. If you get that card at Sneak, it's in your best interest to flip that card immediately because cards that are one-ofs are the types of cards that people are going to be uh, having in their binders once they have the single one that they need. So you want to flip one-ofs before there's mass release because of the fact that you, um, you'll see a lot more of them with people opening boxes, especially with a good set. More boxes get opened with a good set. So cards like uh, Tornado Dragon I mentioned earlier, that's a prime example of a card that if I was to pull it at Sneak, I think I saw someone at Sneak Peek uh, selling it for $30. I'm not, and I'm, I'm in Canada, so I'm not certain what the price would be in the States, uh, but I would flip that card for $25 if I could, just to make sure that I made money on it because it's going to go down and there will be, there will be plenty 
of that card out there. Just remember, if there's if every if every person has three of a secret rare in their deck and it's the best deck, look how many boxes had to get open to get those three secret rares. So that means of the seven other secret rares, at least two to three of them were pulled from that same ratio. So you have to make sure you don't get too tied down to the cards that you only need one of. So I've been mentioning during this whole um, video that I'm excited for the True Dracos, and I think that goes without saying that that's going to be a really fun and uh, interesting addition to the Zoo Engine. Uh, that's what I assume a lot of people are going to be doing. So the True Draco True King uh, deck really gives us a, an extension of our plays with the Zoo Engine, as well as doesn't lose to Barrier as hard as Zoo used to. Now, of course, if you're trying to do Zoo Combo and they Barrier you, it's going to hurt. That's obvious. But the fact that you have a secondary play that doesn't involve using XYZs or uses XYZs less than we used to, I'm really excited for that as well as the Dinosaur Structure deck. Now, I've only recently seen the Dinosaur Structure deck, so I don't have a full grasp of its power, but I do know that the True Draco True King engine can go in with the Dinosaurs. Some of the True Kings are already in the Dinosaur deck, so those are the two decks I'm very excited for because I think they have a lot of potential. So after the set is released, uh, if we're talking about meta, I think the two decks I listed with the Dinosaurs and the, uh, the Zoo True King are going to be heavily played. The one thing I would uh, suggest to people is if you're playing a Grass deck, uh, get get in your grass plays now because as the set's released more and more people are going to be opening packs, there's going to be more ghost ashes and so it's going to be harder to resolve your grass. Now I know you can say like, oh well they better have it. Well if they're playing 40 and you're playing 60, I would say they might say to you, you better have it because it's a it's a better chance, Not I wouldn't say better chance if you're playing 6 grasses, but uh, I don't imagine anyone's going to be playing um, left arm offering with grass out. That's just... That's just a mega minus that would just it would obliterate you in any situation. So if you have three grasses to my three ashes, I don't like those odds in your favor. So I would say we're going to see a lot of 40-card decks with zoos, maybe um, some metal foe variants with the true Dracos, uh, mixing in two different engines that when they destroy cards, it nets you a plus. So I would say those are the types of things to look out for. And then probably 40-card frogs. I think they'll go back to 40-card. Uh, so in terms of set release, I think this is one of the better sets um, that we've had in a little while. Uh, the last set was really good because it gave us the zoo engine. But sometimes Konami re releases sets where, like, it's just not very relevant to the meta, or I shouldn't say relevant. It's not a game-breaking type of set, and I think this is a game-breaking type of set. You'll see that the Secret Rare Field Spell is going to be a very expensive card. You're going to see Ash is going to be very expensive. So uh, the Secret Rares are good in this set. The Ultra Rares are all right as well. Uh, it's n On a scale of 1 to Duelist Alliance, which I consider to be the best set ever, just because we got Satellers, uh, Shadals, BAs, and even Yang Zings all in one set, uh, I would say this is like a 7 out of 10, maybe even 8. So I hope all you guys enjoyed this video, and uh, let us know in the comments what cards you're looking forward to using for Maximum Crisis, and uh, if you guys have any ideas for us for videos in terms of uh, talking about this set, we'd love to hear it. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and uh, good luck in the new format. <laughs>